going on guys? Drew Riley with Air Custom Knives and this is going to be part three of the Grinder Overview Series. And in this video I want to give as brief of an overview as I can of the work rest or tool rest system as it pertains specifically to the flat platen. Now the uh, 8 inch contact wheel, similar sizes like that, uh, the small wheel attachment or any attachment that will set out from the grinder body or the tool arm sockets just a little bit farther than this will have a slightly different setup and I'll go over that probably in the next video. But uh, as for part three, we'll focus mainly on the flat platen and just a few general and basic setups uh, that you're likely to want to use. Now uh, just a quick disclaimer, this is kind of one of my first times running through this system, although I did primarily come up with it, uh, you know, using some inspiration with other systems. Uh, I'm still kind of getting familiar with it, and although it is fairly intuitive and, uh, you know, pretty quick and easy to set up how you want it, you know, I can't possibly go through all of the uh, different nuances and setups in one single video. And uh, I'm learning new and different setups with this all the time, so... I'm sure anybody that ends up uh, getting one of these grinders, if I'm able to take it to production, uh, will probably figure out their own uh, little list of setups that they enjoy using uh, as well. But uh, as far as the flat plan, you've got just a couple of major components here. Uh, one being the main tool arm, and that will be universal to pretty much any work rest setup. Then you've got these pieces here, a piece of cold roll. Uh, three-quarter round which really could be just about any length you want it uh, you know not too short or too long but uh, I found six to eight inches is pretty reasonable that'll fit in the end of the bar here uh, then you got this crossbar uh, kind of a multi-axis crossbar uh, that gives you some added versatility with work table spacing and direction and that, that can really go either below quickly change to the top just depending on if you need a little bit more height or need to drop it down a little bit lower. Uh, quite a bit you can do with that and different applications will call for different setups. And then finally you'll have some kind of a work table. Uh, this is a kind of a general use flat table. It's chamfered 60 degrees on one edge which will come into play a little bit later in horizontal mode. Uh, it's also helpful when pivoting your platen back uh, up to 60 degrees, you can get in much tighter to your belt and your platen this way. But uh, we'll go ahead and pop that in. And this will probably be the most common setup. Uh, right now, the way this is set up, you're going to hit 90 degrees from your sides every time. Uh, whether you're 90 to the face of the platen depends on if you've zeroed your platen uh, from the beginning. And that's pretty easily done with an angle cube. Just zero it on the table, then pivot this to 90, and it'll be perfect every time. And we'll go ahead and leave that there. But uh, obviously, you got quick access to angle changes for sharpening. You know, this can be ran in as tight as needed. You can go backwards. This is good for chamfers, dovetails, uh, if you want to kind of see what's going on a little bit better. And uh, you can even raise your table up and again pivot to the 60 degree chamfer. Run that in nice and tight and based on whatever angle you need, you're ready to go that way. Just rough set our zero on the platen here or the 90. Right now we're in the third tool arm. If we want to get access to the entire platen, we'll drop down to the fourth, tighten our handles. Right now I've got all eight inches of glass and I can lower it down even just a little bit more uh, if I want to get into this little slack belt area here. And this can go all the way up to even over the top of the platen wheel if that would be necessary for whatever reason just set up like so got adjustments here uh, you even got a little bit of a stop pin 
don't know how applicable or practical that will be for anything. But uh, you can kind of set a predetermined depth on your table. You know, maybe mark some divisions off on that and uh, use that as you see fit. But uh, plenty of versatility just within that alone. And now I'm going to show you quickly some horizontal options. And we'll go ahead and pull this down to the third slot. show the rotating option using this long axis here we'll move our rod out just a little bit and we can rough square our table up just lining up the square bar and now we're pretty close to 90 to begin with and again we can use this zero the table zero the platen. You'd actually want to zero the platen first since the table is the movable part. And uh, get however we need on that with the angles. Got plenty of height adjustment to get the full width of the belt. But you've also got pretty much an infinite angle adjustment to whatever angle you might need. And with the table bottomed out we can get up to let's say a rough 60 degrees here pretty easily and still have about two-thirds of the belt available to us uh, if not a little bit more 45 you got a little bit more belt yet uh, if you wanted to get the entire belt at a certain angle this screw would have to be moved forward a little bit is all but a pretty quick and simple system there and really you know, you can still pivot this just a little bit if you want access to your idler wheels. This can be swapped over to the opposite side like so. And you can kind of play with it back and forth from there. Actually what I would normally do is flip this around so I have access to my knob. Run that in and you can see how fairly quickly and easily that's adjusted. You can move tool sockets if you want to get closer or farther away. Uh, just another versatility there. Now if you want to guarantee 90 degrees to the platen without using any angle gauges or getting too complex on your setup, that's very easy to do as well. Pull this out, rotate 90 degrees, flush that up, actually let's rotate this where the handle's on the outside just for convenience. bottom our table out like this and if we need to move to the second slot and now we're pretty well centered up on our platen and guaranteed 90 degrees with your adjustable height still available so uh, that's just a quick tip on that so uh, that's just some real basic features on flat platen work rest setup uh, there is obviously more you can do with this, uh, even in this configuration, you can still, you know, pivot this out as needed, you can swap tool tables, if you want to get in around the idler wheels a little bit better, and uh, you could set this back up the other way and pivot these up and down as well, uh, pretty easily, and uh, I guess I can Show that really quickly. Now do keep in mind this does kind of overextend your tool arm just a little bit uh, to the very last uh, half inch or inch of the tool arm. 
Uh, one quick thing you can do, you can even set up like this. Get yourself a little more length. Move it out like so. And this kind of shows you, you can figure it out as you go along. I've never really thought about doing this before. But uh, now, you know, you've got some adjustable angle here. This can be moved up and down as needed. And it can be moved left and right. Well, if you loosen the one up first. It can be moved left and right to center up like you need, uh, pretty much at any angle. So. Lots of versatility there. Just use your level or angle gauge to set your zero, and you should be good. So that's just a quick rundown of that. Uh, obviously, this can be rotated back the other way and pivoted to an extent that way, but uh, we don't want to make this video too long showing redundancies here. So uh, that should give you some idea of the versatility here. There's really not too many setups I can think of. Uh, that probably won't be possible with the way this currently is. And uh, like I said, I'm kind of discovering new methods and techniques for it all the time. So that's the flat plat. And part four will be uh, just showing some slight differences with the 8-inch contact and small wheel attachment.